Today we're going to tackle a big question. What exactly is continuous delivery? It's often misunderstood, but when done right, it's the most effective approach to software development that our industry knows of. Continuous delivery helps you to build better software faster with less stress. That's not hyperbole on my part, that's what the most respectable research into what works in best in software development says. So here's my 15 minute explanation of continuous delivery. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Modern Software Engineering. If you came here looking for continuous delivery, don't worry, you're in the right place. We've renamed the channel. Continuous delivery is the application of engineering principles to software development. It's a structured way of working that helps us to build high quality software quickly and efficiently. It's based on two key principles, learning and discovery and managing complexity. Learning and discovery. Software development is fundamentally about solving problems and learning as you go. To do that effectively, to help us to optimize for that learning, we need to be able to build software that we can learn from. That means being able to change it easily and safely as we learn new things. So continuous delivery relies on a more iterative, incremental approach to software development across the board. And to be able to sustain that, we must also manage the complexity. To do that, we need to be able to break big problems into manageable chunks and ensure that everything works together even as we change and evolve our system as we learn new things. At its core, continuous delivery focuses on shortening the time from idea to valuable software in the hands of our users, all without compromising its quality at any point. So my tagline, better software faster, is quite literally true. Let me pause there and say thank you to our sponsors. We're very fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple and Honeycomb. Honeycomb help engineering teams deeply understand their own production systems through observability. All of these companies though offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, do click on the links in the description below to check them out. The heart of continuous delivery is the idea of the deployment pipeline. Think of this as a machine that takes every change to our system and verifies its quality immediately, giving us results very quickly so that we can, on an automated basis, determine the releaseability of our system. Unless we can determine that releasability at least once per day, it doesn't count as continuous in a continuous delivery sense. Here's how deployment pipelines work. It begins with a commit stage. Developers commit code and automated tests run to check for obvious issues. Our aim here is to very quickly identify the most common sorts of problems that we're likely to introduce, if there are any. We want fast feedback and in particular, if this change is going to fail, we want it to fail fast. But fast alone isn't enough. If all of the tests pass quickly but there are loads of bugs, that's no use at all. So as well as fast feedback, we want feedback that is reliable enough to build our confidence in the change. So this feedback should take under five minutes and give us around 80% confidence that if all of these commit stage tests pass, then anything else that we test will also pass. The next stage of a pipeline is acceptance testing. These tests check if the system as a whole works. Is it doing what users really need? In this stage, we want to evaluate anything else that determines the releaseability of our system. All of those tests count as acceptance tests in this model. Remember, our aim is to automate answer to this question. Is this change releasable or not? At the end of the acceptance phase, there should be no more work to do to determine releasability. If the tests pass, we can release. If one test fails, we can't. Performance and security checks, specialized tests to ensure that the system is fast enough, scalable enough, secure enough, and anything else that we think is important to determining that releasability. 
The goal is very simple. Every time a change passes through the pipeline, it's ready to release without additional work, as long as all of the tests have passed. I find it helpful to think of this whole thing as, as working on the creation and validation of a release candidate. The commit phase generates a deployable thing at the, if it's successful, a release candidate, if all its tests pass. The acceptance phase validates that this release candidate is deployable, configured correctly, up and running, and does all of the things that our users want to do and anything else that we care that determine its releasability. And now the final phase of the deployment pipeline is the production phase. Now we have a fully tested releasable candidate. Our only job left is to get it out into production, into the hands of our users. This may be very simple for simpler software. We might simply deploy the change, or it might be quite complicated using all sorts of different techniques like blue-green deployment, canary releasing, and observability techniques to get to our software into production and look after it once it's there. So why does continuous delivery really matter? Why is this approach uh, so effective? Continuous delivery enables faster feedback loops. We get to learn if a change works in minutes rather than days, weeks, or months. In one complex project that I worked on, we could determine the releasability of any change to our entire production system in under 56 minutes. Higher quality, problems are caught early. They're easier and cheaper to fix. On the same project, we were in production and under heavy use, yet it was over 13 months before the first bug was detected by a user. That may, may sound extravagant if you haven't seen projects that work this way, but it's fairly common for projects that do adopt continuous delivery as their fundamental practice. Happier teams. Developers spend less time firefighting and more time building great software. The DORA metrics definitively say that there's no trade-off between speed and quality here. So continuous delivery is measurably the most efficient way of working. If you want to save time and money and keep your staff happy, this is the way to go. It also generates business agility because now we've worked in ways that make change easy and safe. And we can respond, therefore, very quickly to user needs or market changes. Continuous delivery is more than only a technical practice. It's a competitive advantage and a business strategy too. Working this way applies several more subtle pressures on us, though, that all push us in the direction of doing a better job. To sustain this pace of change, the code must be easy and safe to change. And that means that we must adopt the techniques of managing complexity. But as well as making our software easy to change, these things are also the hallmarks of the defining characteristics, if you like, of quality in software. So working this way amplifies the quality of our output. By optimizing for fast feedback, we are encouraged, if not forced, to make change in smaller steps. Smaller steps are simpler, and so are lower risk. There's less chance of one change clashing with another, so there are fewer merge conflicts and less time wasted spent resolving merge conflicts. If a change is small, as well as being lower risk overall, if this change does introduce a problem, it will be easier to find, easier to diagnose and easier to fix, or as a last resort, easier to revert. So as well as driving us towards higher quality, continuous delivery also drives us to work more efficiently too. This is where the no trade-off between speed and quality idea comes from really. So teams working this way are significantly better able to keep their systems working, fix them when they aren't working, make progress in parallel with other people working on the system with very few problematic conflicts. Also, by working in small steps, each of which results in something that is potentially releasable into production, organisations that work this way don't miss release dates and have significantly faster turnaround times for problems. This is called the mean time to recovery. All the time while producing measurably higher quality software. It's no wonder that continuous delivery then is practiced by most of the best software companies in the world. Continuous delivery isn't magic. 
It's a practical, informal application of scientific style rationalism and reasoning to the task of software development. So it's not really very surprising that it works better than anything else. There are a few common practices that help it to work though. First, automation. Automate everything. Testing, deployment, infrastructure. This removes manual errors and speeds things up. Version control everything too to support your automation. Code, tests, dependencies, configurations, deployment are all in version control. The continuous delivery mantra is that all change to production flows through version control. Everything. Make progress through small incremental changes. We've talked about that already. Work in small steps. Each change is easier to test, debug and deploy. Optimize feedback loops. Fail fast. Use automated pipelines and monitoring to learn from every release. Collaboration. Teams work together to ensure that software is always in a releasable state. Many people misunderstand continuous delivery. Let's clear up a few myths. It's not just about automation, and it's certainly not about tools. Tools like Jenkins, GitLab, TeamCity, uh, Harness, but, um, are all helpful. But continuous delivery is much more about mindset and discipline than it is about something defined by tools. It's not about deploying every commit either. Continuous delivery means working so that our software is always in a releasable state but you should release it when it makes sense to your business. Sometimes that's multiple times a second, sometimes it's not. It's not only for big technology companies either. Companies of all sizes and industries benefit from continuous delivery. Continuous delivery is by far the most efficient way to organize startups in discovery mode because it allows us to try out new ideas more quickly and learn what works and more importantly, perhaps what doesn't more definitively. But it's not just for small, simple code either. It works for global scale systems and is used to launch space rockets, build cars, release global telecom systems, and write so life-saving software that's used in hospitals. Remember, in continuous delivery, we're optimizing for learning. So experimentation and learning is at the heart of the process. So we're very good at it. Would you like to implement continuous delivery? Then start small. Build a deployment pipeline. Automate your testing and deployment process. Focus on small wins. Identify one bottleneck in your current workflow and fix that. Automate testing. Invest in automated commit and acceptance testing. Build a collaborative culture. Encourage teams to collectively own and build quality systems together. Remember, continuous delivery is a journey, a permanent change in how we organize our work, not a one-time change. Start small and improve continuously. When you're already doing well, experiment some more and find out how to do even better. This is how the, how the best teams in the world win. Continuous delivery is about creating a repeatable, reliable process for releasing software. By focusing on feedback loops, automation and collaboration, you can build better software faster and with less stress. If you'd like to learn more, check out my free training course, Continuous Delivery Fundamentals. There's a link to that in the description below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Modern Software Engineering channel for more insights into continuous delivery and many other modern software engineering topics. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoy our stuff here, please do consider supporting our work by joining our Patreon community. And to our existing Patreon uh, members, thank you once again for your support. It's very much appreciated and allows us to do work like this. Thank you again.